Welcome. You guys had a lot of carbohydrates in you right now. We're going to do a little walk here in a minute. Thank you for being here. Not everybody's here, but we're going to we'll proceed. You're at our home. That's that's the way we look at this for the next 5 days. A lot of good people have come here together to make the weekend happen. We can't do it alone. My wife and Z and Brian and the D-Day boys and Paul and Paul's new girlfriend. She came, Jill came, because Paul now can go nowhere without his girlfriend. If you love her, man, you shut up. It's cool. You guys are going to meet some of the sponsors that are here. Jeff is here with Colorado Craft Beef. Gary is here with CCW Safe. And there's some other guys that are moving through this weekend that uh, are going to pass on some cool know-how. And Alex, if you were not horny when you got here, just take a look at his mustache. Look at him. He's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But if anybody has a problem with this kind of humor, there's a door here, here there and there and you're more than welcome to leave because it's just beginning <laughs> trust me but Paul's one of our instructors Chuck to his right is one of our instructors Daniel Hudnett back here is our lead medical guy from D-Day Alex with that sweet sex stash that you saw earlier Z Von Durham Brian McKenzie myself who am I forgetting anybody I'm sorry Jeff right here and Gary I'm sorry you just got here I'm sorry and my friend Jeff Houston so we've got some great guys. you got Jeff Houston, former Green Beret, exotic dance instructor these days in the greater Dallas area. <laughs> they say he's as big as... Daniel, you're a, a sergeant in the Army. First sergeant, I'm sorry, I didn't say the correct thing. And, and, and you're, you're like 25 years in the fire service? 18, whatever, close enough, a long time. Say that again, please. Gotcha. So you know what you're doing. That's what I'm basically trying to let these people know. Alex grows sweet mustaches. Testosterone levels are still up high. You were a Navy corpsman, right? Awesome. So Brian, you guys know who Brian is? Most of you probably came here to be with Brian. The art of breath. Brian, can you still hold your breath for like four minutes? Five? Four or five minutes. Who can hold their breath for, for two minutes? He can hold it for almost five. That's disgusting. So he's going to talk with you about why that's important and why you guys should be holding your breath more. Now we're going to tie in a lot of what he does, which some of you guys that have anxiety or get keyed up or have high blood pressure or other types of issues like that, or just can't focus when you're excited especially with what we're going to be doing on the range or when Z's got a shock knife that he's trying to shock your taint with. We're going to help you work through those processes by controlling yourself. We got some medical people here. You may do things that get you keyed up. Well, we're going to teach you ways to remain composed in those moments. It's cool. So the medical stuff, the physical stuff, the mental stuff, and the, the shooting and all that. And then dick jokes. If you weave that through like a silver yarn in a quilt or something. It makes it perfect. You got all kinds of cool people here. Oh, you're all cool. But like Dave's sitting back here. A lot of people don't know looking at Dave. He just seems like a nice kind of quiet guy. Just retired from the U.S. Marshal Service and his wife who goes by Mrs. Turley. It's on her driver's license. It literally says Mrs. Turley, Dave's wife. That's how he introduces her. They own a training company down in Arizona. They just hosted us down in uh, the Phoenix area. It was awesome. So they came out so they could steal everything that we're doing here. So some house rules. There will be no firearms out in this structure. I don't care if you're like, I got to touch it. Go to your car if you don't have a vehicle. So there's a couple people here that don't have cars and you might need to manipulate a gun. Come ask. We'll give you a safe spot to play with your gun. That's not code. We'll give you a safe spot to play with your gun. Okay? But we've never, ever had an accident here and we'll continue not to. And that's because we have very simple rules. Is that cool? We also are not going to drink and touch guns. So if you crack a beer, no more firearms. Okay? We keep a pretty tight schedule and a hard charging pace. How many of you have been to S12? Raise your hand high. Don't be, don't be. One, two, three. I mean, do we f around? Is there much time for screwing around? you're probably trying to find time to brush your teeth. And there's a reason for that. The reason is, is that there's only so much time to take everything that we're doing here and put it together. 
We could give you less, and then what? You'd get to sit on your ass more. You'd get to spend more time doing things you get to do when you're not here. And if you have questions about what gear to use, some of you started asking, the premise of this event is to prepare yourself for the realities of violence. So if, if in reality that's the gun you have, I wouldn't probably come down there with all kinds of accoutrements strapped on you. What was your question? So everybody can hear it. We don't have to repeat the same questions. It came with two firearms. Cool. One I've never fired before. Okay. Um, one I carry on my left. One I plan on carrying on my right. That sounds like you, you sound like you look. <laughs> 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 it's true, right? I, I sent you an email, the one I'm going to left my wife. Okay, so you want to, what's the question though? Is that going to be an issue? No. Okay. Yeah, I don't care what you train with. We told all of you, train how you live, how you work, however you think you'll find yourself the day you have to protect yourself. Period. Right? Cool. Any other questions? No? Okay, so just so we get the lay of the land. You see the basketball court out there. Yes? yes? That's where we'll be at 6.15. The smoker will be moved, but we'll meet out there at 6.15. We've got a lot of cars through here now just for safety if we have an emergency. The van and the Chevy, the guy here that's trying to compensate for his very small penis. Where are you at? There you are. I love it. It's cool. It's cool. I, I used to have a truck like that too. And then I had puberty and it's cool. We'll move those later so that we can get vehicles through here. Same here. We just want to keep good ingress and egress out of here, okay? So we'll call this the main, the main cabin. So if you hear us say, you know, we'll meet at the cabin or we'll meet at the, the b-ball court, you know where those places are. There is a pool here if you guys want to use it. It's a little chilly. I did jump into that in my underpants once. Noah Alkenberg that's driving. You'll see these guys with cameras. If you have a problem being on camera, just say something and we won't film you. If you're the kind of jag off that always has to be on camera, we'll notice you and we'll stop filming you, okay? These cabins are instructor cabins, so if you wanna like get in good, Knock on those doors after about 11.30, midnight. Chuck is another one of the staff who has come out for four of these. Another Green Beret that, that worked with Z. So you guys are surrounded by studs and the king of dick jokes. That's pretty cool. Everything that we are going to talk to you guys about this weekend is going to be based around uh, the same simple concept winning 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 in violence winning no matter what winning if uh, somebody's bleeding to death winning if you are involved in some type of violence that was brought to you that you don't want or didn't ask for or maybe controlling yourself in mitigating violence the intention that you came out here with some of you have already told me that you have anxiety I have anxiety there's 50 of you with guns. That's scary. And we don't know each other. But we'll work through that. And we're gonna work through that because we have systems in how we handle the guns, how we train with them, how we move with them, etc. So that part's easy. The part that none of us can help you with, we can force you to do certain things, how you manipulate the gun, how you move with them. We can't force you to change anything with the internal dialogue inside of you. Now, I, I have a feeling every one of you is somewhat successful if you afforded to spend the money to be here, right? Would we all agree? Yes or no? Yeah. I mean, none of us are at the point in our life where if we, you all spend at least a couple thousand dollars minimum, probably closer to four grand by the time you factor in ammunition. What were you gonna say? <laughs> I like that. There's only room for one comedian here, Mike, okay? But that was good, I like that. You, you spent thousands of dollars to be here. You're not stupid. But we all still find ourselves looking to grow. That's why you're here. I think the cool thing is, is you've surrounded yourself with 50-ish people that have a similar mindset. That's super powerful. So not to get like weird about it, my intention for you is really what we're doing right now. Why not really get connected to the 40, 50 people here? Some of you will be friends for life after this weekend. Some of you 
which is totally normal, will find some of the others to be obnoxious or annoying, right? That's the way it is. Some of you already find me obnoxious or annoying. I've already gotten paid, your check cleared, it's okay. <laughs> so we come down here and we're interested in like getting something more out of it. More is different for everybody. Z likes to say should is shit. Let's just purpose ourselves that we're not gonna even waste the energy to talk like losers. Doc's like, I'm a doctor, okay? I don't need this speech. Well, you're here, Doc, so you're gonna get it. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. What we're trying to do here is define and refine some basic things that we can do based on data in science, but that all starts with you defining realistic goals for you. And when you understand that those goals are completely realistic based on science and data, meaning how do tourniquets work? How many times do I have to shoot somebody in the chest to make them stop? What is the legal and ethical application of force against somebody? Not when do I get to use my gun, but shit, if I have to, what point really is this defining moment that gets crossed where I'm not gonna go to jail? And the answer is, there isn't one. You could still go to jail being totally righteous in the, in the use of force. So we're gonna talk about that stuff too, which is kind of heavy. How many of you, if you had to fight Z, would quit? Never. I would not quit. You wouldn't? Well, you're already deemed to be psycho <laughs> with your two guns and those flip-flops from earlier. <laughs> who, who else would quit if you had to fight with Z? Just you? I hope the answer is no. Be because, because if you're not training to fight somebody that, that is skilled at beating you, then why, why train at all? If you're only training to to need to use force against somebody that you already have superior skills, let's go drink, we don't need to be here. You understand? I mean, the whole point is if you need to use a gun or some, some grave level of force, the person that you're fighting poses such a severe risk to you. Does that make sense? We're gonna talk to you guys a lot about the voice that's in your head this weekend, we all have one. That little voice dictates the complete and total outcome of everything in your life. And I think the challenge is sometimes we don't even hear that voice. We, not, we don't pay attention to it. That voice starts to dictate things like how often adrenaline gets dumped into your system. It starts to dictate the fact that something that shouldn't cause you to get an adrenaline response does because you programmed yourself to act like an asshole or perhaps your parents did which is a really shitty thing, but now you're not a child, so you get to reprogram that, but it takes work. So we're gonna talk a lot about that kind of stuff. Some of this stuff borders a little bit on religious side of things, and we are not attaching any religious connotations to things for no reason other than these are natural, physical phenomenons of how our brain and body work together. Our goal for you guys when you leave here on Monday or Sunday night is you leave with a couple of things. One, at least 15 to 20 excellent phallus jokes. The dentist is like, I, I, I just can't. You will. You'll have a whole, you'll have a whole note pen. <laughs> Who heard the dentist? Yeah, he just said open your mouth, say ah. So here's the range. And doing this talk saves us some energy later. If you drive down here tomorrow, you will park on this tree line. Tomorrow, when we have you guys get down here and get set up, just so you know, we'll have a tent here. Ben Simonson from Boresight Solutions will have another tent out here. Tyler's almost to the 10 yard line. We'll set up back here at about 20. So about where the front of the trailer, or the, the, the tent will be here. Okay, so your range bag and all that crap. We're gonna have all kinds of preachy discussions. You guys are gonna be like, oh my God, another preachy discussion. It's for a reason. I guarantee you one thing. The guys that are here, myself included, Z, Alex, Dan, Paul, Jeff, I'm looking around, Gary, these dudes are gonna give you everything they have. Not in a sexual way. <laughs> Maybe. Speak for yourself. 11.30, cabin two. Tick check. I guarantee they will give you everything they have. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Nobody's going to hold anything back. Every single, the problem that we found with this event is we want to give you more, but we can do this, but we can do this. 
there's only so much that we can do. The point is, these guys are gonna give you all, all that you need to, so pay attention. This is, this is not 101 shit here. This is college level You're getting ready to go get your doctorate. Pay attention. It's hard. Hour after hour, I, I, these guys are talking, I wanna be talking, we're gonna all be letting our mind wander. You stay focused, you die. You die out here from the things that we're doing. We've never had an accident with a gun and we're not going to. We're not gonna push any of you past where you're comfortable. We all know how to operate with you guys around guns. Some of you we will push way harder. It's not because the person's better. We're only gonna push you as far as we safely can. You dig that? Yep. Yeah. It's incumbent upon you though, and we'll have another chat out here before we start in the morning to be paying attention to each other. We do a talk, but right now might be a good time to do it about the agreement you guys have with each other. You guys are not here by yourself. You're here with 40, 50 other people to create the training experience and the training environment. So you guys have a responsibility to be a good partner, show up on time, have a good attitude, pay attention. I guarantee though, if you can focus for the next four days, the next four days will change your life. Not because of me or my little brand, not because of Z or Paul, but together, you can't do this by yourself, the amount of stuff we're gonna do. You guys are gonna be dragging heavy dummies. You're gonna be applying tourniquets while while engaging with targets. There will be all kinds of noise out here. There will be fatigue. You guys are going to be getting little sleep at some point because you're going to be wore out. Some of your knees are going to be hurting. We're going to have you up and down off the ground bunches of times. And I told you earlier, it's not to, to show you anything other than where you need to improve. Hey, guess what? If you can get up and down off the ground 5,000 times, fine. Cool. Maybe you need to work on your shooting. If you can do 10,000 push-ups, cool. Maybe you need to work on the medical stuff. If you are a freaking trauma surgeon, great. Maybe you need to work on being able to pick somebody up and move them across an open piece of ground. Does that make sense? Illuminating. Educate means to draw out. That's, that's our job, to draw out of you the parts that you guys need to fill back up. We can say all kinds of cute shit like empty your cup and all that. I'm gonna go fill mine up with beer. But you, it's on you and you alone to spend the next couple of days really hyper-focused on what it is you want to get out of this. If we gave you a checklist, A, B, C, and D, that's a waste of life. That's a waste of life because we are always in flux of where we're going. Do you understand, am I talking to like Pocasy? A couple of you are like, yeah. So why are you here? That's how we start this. And yes, there is the very pragmatic answers of to learn how to shoot better and put a tourniquet on, but we gotta be able to hone in and really quantify that. What we want is when you leave and you're driving home or you're sitting in the airplane, you can say, yeah, I did this, I did this, I did this. And I also learned that I suck at this. My knees hurt, my fricking hips hurt, my butt hurts from the dick dungeon or whatever, and that was a poor decision. And next time I will book earlier to not be in the dick dungeon. I would bring at least 300 rounds of ammo down here. It doesn't mean we're gonna go through all of it, but have all that down here. So grab an ammo can. I mean, if you're the kind of weirdo that comes down here with one box and you start like closing the box up to keep them all perfect, dump that shit in a bucket like an adult that shoots and trains and jam your mags and throw the cardboard in the garbage. And you're like, mm. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Yep, yeah, I would show up range bag, eye, ear protection, knee pads, plate carriers, uh, two tourniquets, IVs, IV bags, IV hanger thing with the little, you know what I'm talking about? It's going, hey, we got a schedule and it's gonna wear on you going up and down the hill, so it's probably better to drive just yeah. to, you know, preserve yourself a little bit for the, the stretch of the weekend, you know? Oh, thanks, good point. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're just, we're, we're not, you could be a tough guy and jog down here, it's a, yeah. <laughs> Nobody's waiting on you to eat when you're jogging up the hill, yeah. and we're already up there. You know what, I mean? what were you gonna say, Z? Hey, so whatever cringe factor you're feeling or weird stuff, or because we're being all funny with dick jokes and all that, we'll get past that eventually, right? So there's a couple of things that that I was taught. You know, I didn't know. We don't know any f thing until we're taught, right? And all myself, Mick the instructors and the cadre and the people that are helping out with this, we all understand that if you don't know, you don't know and we don't hold that against you. It's not like, hey, you're stupid and you don't know shit, so 
we're going to treat you as if you're less than. It's not how it works. And anybody that treats you like that, this is not a sorority or a fraternity. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's about passing on knowledge. And why would you expect somebody to know something if they don't know it? You know, maybe we don't all know, understand that concept. And I didn't at some point in time in my life, right? Where you treated people certain ways because it was a power thing or whatever. But uh, most of these guys that I have worked with several times on, you know, on different projects and different training events. And we understand that it's not about our ego. It's not about our glory, right? It's about what does the audience, the student get? Right, and we understand that if we treat you as if we're in some special club that you're not a part of because you don't know shit, that impedes learning. So everybody get that? So we're gonna give you jokes because that's, that's inherent in having fun and being jovial with each other and just enjoying the, the, the environment that we're in. But as it comes to learning and the important shit that we're gonna go over, nobody's less than, I don't give a if you've never shot a gun or if you've, you're the best in the world at shooting a gun, I, we don't care. That's great, and, I, and it shows your work, and it shows where you are in your journey, but other than that, you know, if you don't know, you don't know, right? So we'll get that out of the way right, right off the bat. Now, the other thing that I've learned is that from a performance psychologist, and Mick's heard me talk about him several times from a 5th Special Forces group, he was hired to come in and, and be a part of our training uh, operation that we were trying to work there as far as strength and conditioning, mental aspect, keeping us maintained because we get older. You know, SF guys are kind of older than most of the Army. Right, and he was a, a performance psychologist, and he taught, and he told me what he learned through his education and and through his journey of what the the definition of confidence is as it pertains to performance. Right, so the definition of confidence is two things, is what he taught me. It's competence, and it's preparation. Competence and preparation. Now, competence, like the word being technically sound, knowing how to do said task or whatever it may be. Right. And that includes like, hey, well, if I come out here, do I know how to draw a gun out of a holster? Do I know how to do it properly and make it work to its max potential or at least make the mechanic, the mechanics work like they're supposed to in the process that I'm working? That's the competence part. Right. You got to know shit. If you don't know what you're doing, it's going to be hard to to meet your max potential. Now, the preparation part, that's what I see is the most difficult in a lot of situations. Right. Well, some of us lack confidence our competence but once you learn how to do the task you can do that like i say hey put this dot on this table and do it like this straight line from this point to this point and we show you how to do it properly and you practice a little bit you'll be pretty competent at it agreed now the preparation part is is talking about of course physical anything that involves physical activity even if it's a little bit or a lot, I mean, that requires some preparation. Like if you're going to do a run a marathon, you got to be conditioned to run a marathon. If you're going to walk from point A to point B over there, like if your legs don't work properly and you can't do it physically, then it's not going to happen. So that is part of preparation. But there's also the emotional and the mental, right? The psychological portion altogether, right? So that means like I could be competent and know how to do a task or execute some process damn well to the T. But can I do it on demand? Can I do it when it counts? Can my body and my mind and my emotions, because you're human, I don't care whatever level of emotional maturity you have, you're all human, you're all subject to emotion to some degree, right? I used to tell myself I didn't have any emotions, I was dumb. I'm one of the most emotional people you're ever gonna meet probably. Whether you know it or not, you're subject to emotion. So can you make that process, that thing you're competent at, can you make it happen successfully when it counts, when it means something? Now, we're doing a regular training event. This is nothing so profound that it matches the highest levels of the military or special operations in its execution, but it's very, very crucial. Very, very crucial. Meaning, we don't, we, even the highest levels of the military and my guys that have been special operations or SWAT team like, like Paul, we know that you can only simulate actual real life violence and combat situations so far. Not even the highest levels with the most money thrown at it can simulate it exactly. There's always going to be a gap there. You can never fully simulate that. But we do know that to get anywhere close to being successful in that environment or in that context, you got to be competent and you got to be prepared. And they both got to overlap. And that creates that confidence for that situation. Right? So what we do here, everything that you're going through now, living in the dick dungeon, I know it's a joke. And I taught the dick dungeon the psychologically if you can't get past that to get the, what you need out of this training then you see what your vulnerabilities are already right I'm ready to go. 
<laughs> you got me going, man. I'm ready. No, we're going to get in there. I'm coming to that dick dungeon. Ninja. <laughs> I'm going to. So look. <laughs> so being in this environment, how many has not taken a class involved with a lot of people or a big group of people? So that inherently brings its own little bit of anxiety and fear. I mean, fear is just not the unknown, right? You don't know what's going to happen, right? So it, it provides anxiety and fear and then the uncomfortableness of like, what is he going to think of me? How am I going to perform in relative to him, right? How am I going to look? How's this going to go down, Mick? I don't know how this works. <laughs> Mick knows me. I was anxious the first time I talked with him here because I didn't know how it was going to work. I didn't know how it was going to pan out for me, right? That's normal. That's normal human things. But even though we can't replicate and simulate exactly what happens in combat, their emotional and psychological responses going on, you're still benefiting right now because you're working in an unknown environment. You're working against anxiety. You're working against fear. This is benefiting you already. So we do this on purpose. It's inherent with a class or an environment like this. Right? Take advantage of it. Getting up and being rigid with our schedule a little bit. You want to go slower? because you're used to being in your comfort zone and we say hurry the f because the group's counting on you to f hurry the f so we can get be on schedule, right? All these things play into being better, a better you, right? It's not f games, it's not little games and little shit that we're just doing to mess with you and be cringy or whatever you can think of. It's, it's actually benefiting you. So everything we do, I want you to look at it as a benefit from here on out. From this minute forward to the last minute that we're here, it's a benefit to you. Right? Who kind of goes on their own schedule doesn't have really something rigid that they stick to? I mean, everybody's got work and shit that you got to do, but pretty much you do what the f you want. Nobody tells you how to when to get up usually. And even when you do, do, do have work, it's, it's on you to get up. It's on you to make that decision to comply with that shit. Right? Well, everything we're doing here is to benefit you. If you're uncomfortable, this is what I want you to do in your head when you feel uncomfortable here. Man, he's weird. He's talking about dicks or f <laughs> he's looking in my eyes when he's talking about this or that or this guy's sleeping close to me or this guy's snoring when I'm trying to sleep. This guy's in my bunk for the third time tonight. <laughs> third time. He's a beast. He's a beast. But I want you to look at it beneficially. It's beneficial for you. Whatever is uncomfortable for you right now is beneficial for you. The obstacle is the way. It's in the Bible. I'm just kidding. <laughs> People, he made religious jokes. I'm very uncomfortable with that. Well, get the f over it because this is part of your you growing. You being everything you you receive from here on out. I don't care what it is. A mosquito bite, a tick on your butthole. Look at it as an opportunity to be f better. If you subscribe to our tick check program, that can <laughs> yeah, and I will we will help you. We're very trained in that. I think there's a national certification that we receive. Tick check buttholes. Dot com. <laughs> but really though, you get what I'm saying? Everything comes from our heart and the only reason we do this, like nobody's getting rich off this. Mick is running around this country all the damn time because me and him are good friends other than us working together. He's running around this country all the time. It's not because it's making him rich. It's because he cares about the end product. He cares about the end user. He cares about what he's just passing on to you guys. He's passionate about it, right? Um, I get behind that because I recognize that. Real recognize real. You ever heard that? That's the Proverbs in the Bible as well. You need to read. You don't know that. Was that Tupac? The book of Tupac. Exactly. Chapter 3. Anyway, so competence, preparation. So if there's shit going on with you emotionally and psycho psychologically, that's part of that preparation part, man. Get your competence down, right? Perform on demand. Perform with your buddies. If the guy at the end of the line is doing a drill and he's shooting 10 times faster than you and you try to keep up with him and you start missing, guess what you need to do? Worry the f about you, not compared to him. Right? We're all on different journeys, man. It don't mean shit. I got to talk tomorrow during dinner that we'll, we'll go a little deeper into this journey thing and levels of shit and being capable of this or that. Right? It doesn't make your, it doesn't define you. Right, so we're proud to have you, man. It's, I'm a proud to be a part of this for, I don't know how many times we've done this now, Mix since 2018. Is that right? 17 or 18. 17 or 18? I think this is eight. All right, so I've been a part of this ever since it began, and I'm still honored to be a part of it. And I'm honored to meet all the people that are with me that Mick brings into my life by bringing, because he sees good people too. I trust in him to see those good people. 
because I don't care about what you have to offer as far as credentials, skills even. I don't give a f what your skills are. I recognize good people. And if I see the heart, I see the will, I see the, the motivation to be better and be transparent for those so they can be better. Because making you believe I'm something mystical that I'm not is not making you better. That's making you less than, right? Letting you know that I'm you and you're me. We're the f same. That makes you better. If you hold me in any high regard, right? So Mick recognizes those same things, and I'm honored. I'm honored again to be a part of this shit. And thank you for putting your time and money into this. And we're gonna have a good weekend, guys. It's gonna I be appreciate awesome. You. Thank you, Mick. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I, we'll talk a ton, you guys. We're not, I don't want to burn you out. Z's going to talk to you tomorrow night while we eat supper. You're going to hear from Gary, I told you. You're going to hear from Paul. You're going to hear from Jeff. You're going to hear from Brian. You're going to hear a lot from me to the point that you're like, shut up. And I'll be like, you shut up. It's my f event. <laughs> Craft beef cattle get a little older, which gives them a higher propensity to gain some weight and get a little more natural, natural marbling and tenderness. They seem pretty calm and relaxed. Yeah. Living a pretty nice life out here. Yeah, they don't have a lot of worries. So this is Bailey. Bailey. She's a five-year-old quarter horse mare. She came out of a rain cow horse program. She kind of decided that she didn't want to do the arena stuff anymore, so she came to live on the ranch in January. And she's been doing ranch work stuff and just loves it. <laughs> she never had a rope swung on her, and I branded calves on her this spring. And so this is our standard box. If you order one of our boxes, it comes in this. Um, as long How as much you don't meat pound wise, can you fit in there? Like 15, 15 pounds? to 18 pounds, depending on ice packs, depending on where it's going. Um, and it comes frozen. When it leaves here, it's froze. It's frozen. Yes. Uh, and then actually there's a USDA food safety handling card that we insert in there uh, that talks about proper food safety. If it shows up and you have issues, these are the guidelines. Uh, anything over 40 degrees needs to be thrown away. Uh, and the thermal dynamics of shipping boxes is actually really interesting. Uh, everything goes in the box, we seal it, it goes straight to FedEx. Over time, it will start to unthaw, especially right now. It's 100 degrees outside. If it shows up to your place and any part of the box is still frozen, the whole box never got above 32 degrees. So basically everything starts at zero, climbs to 32 within the first eight hours. And it'll hold at 32 until everything is unthawed and then it comes up. So there's this big plateau. So as long as we deliver in that plateau, we're good. I got a, you sent me one, the one you've got on the yeah. floor. And I'm 800 miles from home, 900 miles from home and it, everything was still totally frozen, which was great. I just passed it from your cooler to mine and took off to Tennessee with it. 